Well, hello everybody, it's Sandy, and today I'm going to look at a house mouse image that I'm going to color with my Copics. I'm going to do a little bird and a little mouse, and I will show you some ways to add detail to these that you may not have thought about because it's tough with Copics sometimes on little tiny images. On this one, I decided to go to my hex chart and pick some colors. So instead of using my normal E51, which is my, my favorite skin tone color, I went for an R000. And then I jumped down, I wanted to go for something a little more on the, the orangey side for the ears and the feet and stuff. Uh, normally I go for a more pinky or peachy. And I decided to see what happens if I go into a YR and I kind of like it. So the hex chart is making me branch out into other things and use my other colors. And especially if you have markers that you're like, man, this color is not at all like what I thought it was gonna be, try it with some things that you hadn't tried it before. Because you bought the thing, so use it, <laughs> use it on your coloring. So here I'm going to color my little mouse with cool gray as the base color. And then I'm gonna go in and add shadows with a warm gray and then a series of warm grays to build up the fur and give him more depth to it. If you look at photos of mice online, then you'll see that a lot of them have kind of two-toned, so warm and warm and cool gray little fur on them. So this image is not gonna have as much detail in it when I color it with my Copics, or especially if you color over top of it with your colored pencils, because that covers up all those pencil lines. So I'm gonna show you a technique at the end to add some of that detail back in. And here I'm adding my BV for my shadows like I do on my skin tones with the mid-tone over top of it, and then I'm gonna go in with the light color and blend that. All right, now I want a, a color for the inside of the mouth and I'm going for the light reds. So I'm using an R14, because I didn't wanna use like an R46 or an R29, which is, Kind of a bloody looking red and I wanted it to be dark and rich but not not like like their mouth is bleeding from singing too much and here I wanted to use the B32 and the B23 and while I do that I'll talk about the difference between them sometimes the numbers if they just flip them the markers look almost identical but in this particular case they don't the B32 has a 2 for the last digit which means it's lighter and then you'll see in a moment, ignore this B000 for a moment, I'm just trying to blend that so it'll go softer into the white. But now look at the difference with the B32 that we had and the B23. The three means it's a darker color. And that's why the, the two three, which to some people, if they're misunderstanding the number system, two three sounds like a lower number. So it should be a lighter color and it's not. Okay. Now the thistle, I pulled up a picture and the base color, the main color is a V04, so I'm gonna go with a V12 for the highlights and RV19 for the shadows. There isn't a whole lot of RV19 in the photo, so I picked a more intense color just because I wanted to add some really rich pop of color. If I had gone with the V colors, like the V06 or 09 or something, they would stay more with the purple, but it, those are kind of dead purples. They're not really bright, intense purples. And the RVs tend to be a lot more intense, and it's gonna give you a lot more brightness on the image. I'm adding some V12 around the edges of the bottom of the thistles to add a little bit of difference to them, because in that photo I saw a little tiny bit of, of that uh, purplish color. Now I'm gonna add my shadow colors at the bottom of each of these little tassels of the thistles. And then on top of that, I'll add the V04. The V04 will then bring everything back to feeling like a purple flower. But again, you're seeing that it doesn't look like there's a lot of detail in those little tiny lines because the, pe the pen lines from the stamp are actually so small that it makes your, pen your Copic coloring look like it's fat, I guess. Um, some stamps don't do that, but I will show you a technique in a moment. So I was going with a YG63 and a 61, and then I jumped over to the BG99. So you don't always have to stay really close to it when you choose your colors, because on this one I wanted to have some kind of medium to bright light greens, like I saw in that photo, and then add just a little pop of a dark green in the shadow areas, and that'll really make them look dimensional. And you'll see how that plays out in just a moment. So I'm going to color everything with a base coat of the YG61 first. 
get all that in there. And I'm trying to use just the tip of my marker to get thin lines. And here's where that BG99 comes in. The Some of the thistle photos that I saw had almost stripes up them, up the sides of them. And I'm making it go around in a curve in the same direction that the actual round shape does because it's going to give it more of that dimension. And it's also going to create kind of those little rows of pores. I don't know if that's what they're called on, on thistles, but it's going to have those little rows which will make it look more, more natural. And then I'll add just a tiny, tiny bit in some random places on the, the greens on the thistles. And then it's time to just take that medium color and blend some of that together. You can see I'm getting a real rounded shape on that bottom now because I put the medium tone on the bottom section and left that light kind of highlighting the top part of that round little shape. I don't know if they're called the same thing, like I think rose rose hops, rose hips, um, if they're called the same thing with thistles. And of course, I don't even know the, the name for the, the part of the roses, but you know, don't know it for thistles either. Alrighty, now let's move on to that tree trunk. And I'm going to use an E34 and an E57 because I don't want a super dark color in this. Um, if I use super dark, it's going to overwhelm the rest of the image. So I want it to be light enough, but have enough punch of color that the flowers show up against it. And yet that it's going to have enough, enough color, but not too much. So these are, are both kind of good medium brown types of colors. I've left a little white around that thistle that's right in the front because I wanted to make sure I add a little extra of the purple color all the way around it as it blends into the brown just to make sure that it looks like it's got a, a little thistle glow on the outside. And now it's time to make the wood texture in this. You can color it just solid the way that the stamp is drawn, but when you're using your Copic markers, a lot of times those lines tend to disappear and you lose some detail. So I'm going in with just the tip of the marker and I'm making kind of just squiggly lines down uh, the, the length of those pieces of wood. And there's a few sections that had shadow in them, so I'm letting those have heavier coverage of this darker brown. And just creating some striations in the wood texture along here. Using just the tip of the marker and the lighter, you, lighter touch you can develop, the thinner a line you can get. There's also a little lip underneath of their feet and around the edge of that stump so you can get a little bit of dimension there. Now I'm going to go back in with my, my E34 again and just soften some of those areas. And I'm, you know, you can see I'm not being really super tight and super careful with it because I'm going to add something else to it in my last step when I add detail. So quickly I'm going to add a little Y11 just to put a little sunshine in behind them. You could do it with a blue as well, but I wanted something that would contrast with that blue bird. If you did the bird in a different color, then a blue would look really nice back there. And then I'll soften that out with a Y triple zero. And now it's time to add detail with a color pencil. <laughs> I've got a super sharp color pencil. I use a sharpener, an electric pencil sharpener that gets them this sharp. And I do go through a lot of lead. A lot of people were asking in one of my recent videos, if I go through a lot of lead, and yes I do, because <laughs> that's what my technique requires, and I like getting a lot of super sharp detail in things, so I keep my pencils super sharp, and I sharpen them repeatedly as I'm coloring, because as soon as you start getting a big fat nub, it's going to get harder and harder to get any extra detail in there. So I'm adding in a couple places the darkest, darkest detail just to add a little bit and you can just kind of squint at it and see that all of a sudden that detail is starting to pop out right here between the toes you can see each of the toes start to appear as you darken that detail and when you have a stamp with tiny tiny lines like this and all that detail drawn in sometimes that really gets lost when your coloring is over top of it so i like to go back in and add some of that detail right back into the image and now I'm going to add way more detail to the wood grain. And I'm even going to change some of the directions of some of it and add deeper shadows in some of the shadow portions. And adding here I'm even putting in a little knot. And all you have to do is kind of draw a pointy oval and then go around it to create some lines that are going around the knot. 
all kinds of really fun things you can do with a little bit of texture. And here I've got a purple pencil because I didn't want to go in with a black on the flowers. And I'm adding little lines to that and all of a sudden now they look like they're detailed flowers instead of looking like they're Copic blobs. Uh, to finish off my card, I didn't have any paper that was the purples that I used in this particular piece. So I decided to airbrush my own paper, you know, because you can do that, right? You could use marker strokes if you want, but airbrush allows me to do these thin layers. So I did the RV19 and then I added some V09 on top of it until it became the color that was going to work well. And I have my sentiment from Mama Elephant that's stamped in here. And I added a little bit of yellow since I had the airbrush out. And I'm gonna add these little tiny, they're supposed to be suns because it's a, a sunshine set, but I made them like little little poofy things flying through the air, little, little dust blobs. And I think it came out really cute. So look how sweet this is. You spend a little time coloring on the image and it just makes the card pop. I've anchored the, the image down at the bottom and it just really, really sings. I love the contrast in it and all that detail that I got in. So here are a couple other videos you can go and take a look at. Uh, one is Copic and the other is colored pencil. So you can see a little more of both of those. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a really fabulous day. If you would like to subscribe, please do because I put out videos all the time for you. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.